unlike previous projects of mine where I've just kind of uh, got the welder out and started cutting and welding and using my imagination I'm actually planning this one so if you go in online and start surfing around you can actually find the dimensions for a P38 belly tank um, so these are one foot hang on these points are a foot apart and correspond with these sort of brown marks so you, you get to about 12 and a half feet long and then you've got the diameter here in inches so it's about three foot wide at the widest point so if you take that information you could build something like this hang on which is a wooden kind of model that you use to form your uh, aluminium body panels around and I may actually build something like that but I'm thinking I may actually build it on the chassis I may weld up a perimeter chassis um, kind of two rails basically um, put the axles on and then mount in, um, marine ply circles to that but we'll see because it, it'll take up less space if I do it that way um, however we've so you've got your dimensions so then you can use something like this now this I'm, I'm not into I'm not some sort of clever CAD engineer this is actually Google SketchUp it's a free program and you can do basic circles and lines and measure dimensions on it so you see it allows me to design a few things um, and there's YouTube tutorials which show you how to use this um, allows you to do a number of things um, for example I can set my front wheel at 29 inches in diameter and my rear tire at 31 which is what I'm aiming for if I can get a bigger one I will um, there's some very very rare wheels which are not 16 inch they're wider than that um, but they're rare as hen's teeth which would allow you a bigger diameter tire um, however I can then set I can draw my model out and then um, I can cut off the bottom and I can experiment with cutting the bottom off flat at an angle you know because um, basically I'm aiming for five inches of ground clearance which is what this is the ground is actually this sloping line here I can also plan out then uh, I can also look at this from the front in cross section and I can calculate if I use box section say of um, that's 50 mil by um, 100 mil box section I can calculate how far in from the edge it's got to be so I can fit my frame in without it hitting the aluminium and I can move it in an extra probably centimetre just for um, good measure but if I accurately build that it should fit the, the inside the body shell and giving me the maximum amount of space for me and my engine um, the other thing I can do is export these files um, just this perimeter line get rid of everything else as a DXF file and then I can use laser cutting software um, I might just see if I can show you that um, I'm using a cheap like this is the cheapest laser cutter money can buy um, the, it's called K40 it's Chinese it was originally designed for cutting some sort of strange greeting cards that are personalized and cut um, but people kind of in the rest of the world re realize you can modify them by ripping out the uh, internal clamp assembly for these greeting card things uh, stencils or whatever they were and just use it as a laser cutter and you can cut stuff like this which is three mil thick plywood um, you need to do a few upgrades I want to make you know some of them are just to make it safe like I have a micro switch here which means when you lift the lid it cuts the laser off now you think that might be quite important because you can't see the laser it's infrared and it will burn holes in you if you uh, put your hand in the way so uh, you add a few things like that I've also upgraded the mirrors and the lenses and um, there's some various better extraction system um, and other things so but it's still even then it's still the cheapest laser cutter money you can buy but you can get them to work reasonably well if you do a few mods and there's websites that show you everything 
you need to do there. So here's the f sort of free software that you can use with that. If I open the design file, let's just see if I can find it. Um, where's my belly tank project? Here we are. Uh, it's this one. Here we are, laser cut, stretch, full size, uh, laser cuts, positive model. Let's see what that looks like. If we open that, tell it what units you're using, millimeters. Right, I don't know if you can see there. There it is. And so if you connect that to your laser cutter and start cutting, it will cut out that pattern and bingo you end up with uh, something like this shape see here and then you can build scale models which I'll come to in a minute so here is a here's a sort of slightly cobbled together scale model with cutouts for the axles um, I've 3d printed to scale a front axle and the wheels of the crack diameter and a wheel axle rear axle and I also can produce a kind of negative one to see if I would fit with an engine. And this I am to scale and so is the engine. And you see how on earth did I produce these? Right, well they're done on a 3D printer. Here's one, you can hear it running. It's just printing some something else. Um, so um, I'll just quickly cover how I made these models. This is called um, Agisoft Metashape. It's available for free for 30 days. Um, how does that work? It uses something called photogrammetry. So if I sit on my driveway and using my mobile phone I take pictures, many many pictures, so I walk all around myself like this. A friend takes pictures taking pictures and then I go right round at this level and I go right round again at floor level all the way around so you end up with about 80 pictures you can import them into this software each of these blue squares represents where the camera was where how it's facing um, when it took the picture and you can see in the middle of all this blur is a, a rendering of me sat so there we are sat on the floor and if you can see that so um, it will, I don't know, it's a bit like a CT scanner or something like that. It basically crunches away for about four hours processing all these photos and um, working out the directions they're taken from and it'll produce a three-dimensional image. You then um, have to cut away the stuff you don't want, like you'll end up with the floor and part of the background. There was a fence behind me. You can sort of um, draw around that and delete it and eventually you end up with just me. And you can click a button which will fill in any holes so it forms like a, a mesh, um, a solid mesh and you can export that to a 3D printing program which would then run on your 3D printer. Um, and so doing it with a bit of maths, just pocket calculator stuff, I can print a model there of me. And you see it's not high definition but it's, it's good enough because all I want to do is me in a sitting position, will I fit into the car? And I can print it to scale so it will fit into my scale model that I laser cut. And I did the same with the engine. Now the detail on the engine is actually quite impressive. I'll just put a light on here. Um, you've even got head bolts, we've even got part of the uh, the uh, generator fan drive belt. Uh, you know this is this is a budget printer that I'm using and these were just taken with an old um, Moto G4 mobile phone and crucially you've got things there's enough detail to show where the engine mounts are at each end and I can print this to scale so that again when I put this in my model I can see for example that if I want to have a radiator behind me with some sort of air vents and a bulkhead um, it's going to be a tight fit. That's the first thing I realised. So I built a model, hang on, and here is the equivalent 
um, image of the engine. You can see it's a three-dimensional structure. So we can export that in a format that the 3D printer can then work with. So this is the software now I've opened for the printer and you can see there's a, a something resembling an engine sitting on the build platform and all this fuzzy stuff around it is support material which then breaks away once it's printed to reveal the uh, hopefully the engine in all its glory. So here is my first scale model uh, 31 inch rears 29 inches across um, slightly nose down stance a uh, little gap underneath I, you notice I haven't flattened off the bottom here yet because I wasn't I was thinking about exactly where to cut it um, and this is the standard tank it's not stretched it's not altered in anything from the correct direct dimensions and then you can mess around with your model people and your model engine you know and, and uh, um, to cut a long story short I decided I'm going to stretch my tank. Now the people making fiberglass tank replicas um, up to two foot stretched in the US but I mean stretching it two feet makes it look completely wrong. Um, I don't know it just looks like a long sausage so I decided to just give myself an extra six inch um, in the length there as you do. So what would that look like? So the beauty of this is now you can print it out again Okay, I haven't done the whole 3D thing here, I just did it in silhouette. And I'm having trouble doing this with one hand, but no, it's not going to work. Oh, there we go. There. Now, you can see, well, okay, that's what it would look like if you stretch the frame by six inches, it's still recognisable. I've flattened the base, slightly nose down, tilt. Um, I can put my self in with my feet right up against the front suspension and then work out if I should, there's room for my engine could I get a radiator in still my legs are deliberately a little bit extended here you know if the cockpit was tighter than that I had to bring my knees up more there's room to do that I kind of deliberately did that I could also sit up straighter but actually I don't want my head sticking right out the top I just want like the top of my head sticking out the top with my eyes looking over the top of it so you can see you can work obviously I'd be sitting a bit higher up be about like that you see so yeah it's, it's kind of it's kind of about right so making these models has really helped me get my head around um, what I need to be making and uh, here's another here's another model with the wheels built in and the wheel centers which then allows you to work out where your perimeter frame might go um, you know and, and, and so on and so forth and we've got some some wheels and um, I can experiment with where I where I put my flattened base to get the angle right and it's just been really helpful so where does that lead you well then you end up with hang on set of drawings so got a set of drawings like this one and this one so these numbers are the distance in uh, so if I put in a, a a perimeter frame a ladder frame that's 100 mil deep the top of the frame is level with the join between the upper and lower panels uh, I can then put all dimensions in but what I can also do is um, work out how far in the edge of the frame needs to be so that the bottom of the frame isn't hitting the curve of the underside panel, aluminium panel. So I can put these dimensions in and work them all out before I cut anything. And then we can take that to a point where I can draw in where where my frame rails are going to go, where they're going to be bent. If I do pie cuts, I can work out um, what angle they need to be. I can even go online and uh, there's, there's things called triangle calculators. So if you can make a pie cut, it'll tell you, uh, if you imagine it as a narrow triangle, how wide pie cut needs to be at the inner edge.
So you're going to cut a little triangle out. So here it would need to be 9mm across. Assuming my box section is 50mm um, this way. Um, so 8.3, 6.9, 9.89. So if I cut my pie cuts to about that and then bend the box section prior to welding it, it sh the edges should meet up and it should be exactly the right angle. So you, uh, there's far more planning in this than any of my previous projects to be honest. So what do we end up with? Well, um, I need to cut a full size template for use in the garage. So here's the front on this big piece of cut. This, this is one to one scale. Let me come right round. This is just one side of the body because I need to work out how to cut my um, chassis rails and then it comes down to the bottom. Um, there's a jump here from 5 feet to 6.5 feet because I put in the 6 inch um, stretch and these marks like here and here and here they are um, basically if the chassis rail was any further out than that it would hit the curve as the aluminium came underneath it so I'm going to allow another centimetre in and then build my chassis rail using this as the plan um, so it's full size <laughs> 